Hey guys, Miracle Max here. Ever have trouble with ghosting in your TV? It can be really scary. But hang around and I'll show you a simple solution for this particular problem. Okay, so it appears at this stage that it's in good condition, crystal clear right across the board. But notice what happens when I simply twist the, twist the backboard a bit, or the TV. Can you see the ghosting now? A lot worse than it was before, and that's simply by flexing the TV. So I'll be trying to isolate it. When I had a look at it before, it was worse on, worse on the left hand side than the right hand side. So it's possible that it's just a bad connection. That's an excellent video. This guy really knows what he's on about. One thing that I find frustrating together with other electronics enthusiasts is when you're dealing with manufacturers service manuals, uh, basically they tell you just to replace components, as simple as that. If you notice, I've managed to dig up a service manual for this particular TV. And if you have a look at uh, the first description there, it says abnormal display distortion and unstable picture, which is pretty much what we have, isn't it? Notice the repair section. It says change the control board or the TCON. Um, now, I believe it's a bad connection. Um, so what they're saying is to make money, we just replace the control board. And of course that isn't cheap either. So you might as well go and buy yourself another TV. So I don't like that idea because it means sending it to the recycling depot whereas hopefully we can get it up and running for um, not much effort. So let's have a look at it together. Okay, so this Samsung is made up of four main boards. At the moment, we're looking at the power supply. Underneath all that shielding is the main board. Up the top there, we have what's called the T-Con board or the timing control board. And on the side of the screen, we have the inverter board which lights up the little LEDs that provide the backlight for the TV. Another thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, connection problems is the amount of dust that builds up in these components. Um, obviously they have a fan, but uh, they still build up quite a bit of dust in different areas. As you can see around my diodes there, fuses, etc. there's quite a large amount of dust, so I'll be cleaning that up shortly. Um, even my fan is suffering a little bit from uh, dust inhalation. So we'll clean that up and make sure everything's spick and span before we go any further. So one way to figure out if it's a T-Con board fault or if it's the actual LCD screen all the way through, if you can get it to play up again, uh, there we go. If you can see that it goes through across your menu as well as across your um, your picture in the background, then you've got an LCD fault. The actual panel is faulty. Um, if it just goes through the picture, but not the menu, then it's a T-Con fault. So as we can see in this particular case, we're looking at an entire screen that's faulty. I'll price it and I'll let the customer know how much they're up for and if it's worth it or not. But if you just let it go, it's not too bad. But obviously it's a connection fault with the LCD screen itself. So common sense at this point in time would tell me to just let the customer know that the screen has had it and it's time to say goodbye to it. But me being me, don't like to get rid of things if there's any possible chance of fixing it. So I've pulled off the outer um, plastic housing or the, um, the front of the screen there. Uh, the next section that I'm going to go to is where the LCD actually um, triggers off the uh, T-Con board. So that'll be my next port, port of call. Um, I may be wasting my time, but oh, I just feel like I want to give it a shot. Let's see what happens, hey? So when you're taking off the uh, frame of the screen, the front section, there's a whole heap of screws located in these holes here, here and further right around the screen. Now you notice that they're quite easy to find because they've got one of those little arrows next to them. So for now I've got the supporting frame taken off the TV. It's actually live at the moment so I have to be very careful using my spudger as per normal. Um, but what we do have is um, flexible printed circuit cable. That's what these little bits are here. 
and these bend over to go they're actually adhered to or stuck straight onto the screen itself so basically if they are faulty she's a throwaway screen but there is a bit of a, a trick that you can do to try and remedy this issue that we're having um, and basically what we do is we um, flex each one of these um, circuit ribbons and uh, see if the fault comes on. So as you can see the TV's already switched on and I've got it up and running my favorite uh, channels on YouTube channel and all you do is you go around and you touch each one of these ribbons and see if you can get it to distort on the screen as we did with the last one or well, last time we saw it distort didn't we now I've gone right up the other end and I couldn't fault it there but this one on the end is just got a there we go see that let's see what we can do to repair it one area that these TVs suffer from is where the flexible ribbon adheres to the actual TV screen itself and as heat and vibration occurs then you tend to get this ghosting across the screen and of course that occurs particularly on the edges that's the worst area so one quick fix it's not necessarily a, a permanent fix is you get yourself an old rubber tire off a car there we go and you just slice it up into little segments like this and they actually fit right there and what that does is put pressure on the back frame that holds the the screen down as you can see those little lumps there and of course where it goes into the screw holes which in turn puts pressure on these areas here where it screws to so that's what I'll be doing now and of course the best thing to do is just put it with a little contact adhesive to hold it in place just put it there make sure it doesn't um, squeeze out too much to put pressure on the where it actually bends but we just want to keep some tension on where it goes onto the screen so that's what I'll do next I'll glue each section with a little tiny dob of glue and uh, fit them into place and hopefully when I reassemble it that should solve the issue not a permanent fix but uh, one that might possibly help when you've put these little um, spaces, I guess you could call them in place, the goal is simply to put some pressure onto that ribbon. So as you can see along here, once that's pushed down, it puts extra, extra tension on the connection between the uh, flexible ri ribbon onto the actual screen itself. So now time for assembly. So now it's just a waiting game. I've had it running up for about half an hour now. If I tap along here, I can't get any distortion, I've twisted it, I can't get anything to play up. But we'll just give it, you know, quite a few hours, perhaps a couple of days and just keep it running and just see what happens to it. But it's one of those things that's not a permanent fix, but uh, fingers crossed we've got it sorted. I've had the TV running for about two days now. I'm happy with the results. Uh, I've had it on its back, its side and of course on its end. I can twist the frame and get no distortion there as it did before. So even though I can claim this as a fix for now, just be assured that it's not a permanent fix, um, but I am happy with the results for now. If you haven't guys, please subscribe to my channel. Feel free to give it a like and don't forget to comment below. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, we'll catch you later.